I bid you welcome or a welcome back. Back into another video of me saying that I've been working <laughs> on those 1000 big projects I always mention and I haven't finished any of those. So let's make a quick video and hopefully it's not going to turn into a week long project again. Now just a few days ago I was talking to a few people and somebody somewhere brought up Borodante. And he was an art YouTuber, still is pretty much. He's been making uh, digital painting videos for years. Lately he transitioned into game development. I think I mentioned uh, his channel and his, uh, his videos a few times before. I was thinking about it when somebody brought him up and I said that I don't even know where I would be if it wasn't for Borodante and I truly mean it. I have no idea where I would be now and what I would be doing. So... Frankly, he might be one of the most influential people in my entire life. By the way, I was in the Overpin series and this one was my video. Accidentally, it ended up the very last Overpin video when only one submission was worked on. So I was pretty lucky with that one. I've been wanting to remake this picture for some time, but I still haven't gotten to it. That would be a fine video one day. What I wanted to do today, make a video that is really close to his original Let's Paint videos. Like I call my series, like my main series, the Let's Paint series as an homage to his old videos. And the thing is that I changed up my format quite a bit. And today I just want to make something that is really close in both feeling and in execution and, and all that to the old Borodante Let's Paint videos. Now I made this three-headed horse as practice because somebody recently asked me to make a picture of three horses and I wanted to properly practice making horses because I've never really done it before. I made this as a study from photographs. You can see that for the third head I kind of... Um, <laughs> I kind of lost my momentum, let's just say that. I want to make something similar to this and I actually have it in mind what I want to do. Let's start with a canvas of 2500 by 2000 and I decided to make a two-headed unicorn. I don't know what it's going to turn into but I want to make a two-headed unicorn and I want to make it similarly and I want to use brushes and a technique that was directly inspired by Borodante. I haven't used this one brush in a while, it was based on one of his brushes and there's this other one that was based on the famous old potato brush that he's been using for quite some time so I want to use these two to make my piece and I will do the search method where you essentially just place down a bunch of color spots and then you find what you want to create in them. That sounded like a weird explanation but I will roll with it so let's see how it goes. And now grab everything I said in this video so far and throw it into the garbage. Not long after I started this piece disaster managed to strike. See, in order to understand what happened and why exactly I decided to start the whole thing almost from scratch, I need to talk about one particular video made by Borodante, and it's the how to paint like a god video. Totally not clickbait by the way, it was the video I saw from him for the first time and it quite literally changed my life. I just mentioned before that I have no idea where I would be if I didn't find Borodante and that was the introduction to his videos back in 2017. That was where I learned the the technique of painting with color spots without any sketch or layer modes, even without layers at all, and that was uh, when everything I was doing fundamentally changed. Beyond gaining a new perspective to digital painting, I fell into a trap that started with that one video, and actually I've been wanting to talk about that video for a while, and I wanted to make a funny thumbnail and title like this art video saved and ruined me, or something like that, some funny clickbait. My point is that I was in the right moment mentally to see that video, but I wasn't ready to see it with the knowledge I had at the time. Better said, 
lacking so much knowledge at the time. This technique is super hard on its own. I fell into the trap of watching someone do a thing that they made look so really easy but I failed to understand that the only reason this person is capable of doing that is because Boro, unlike me, was insanely skilled. It's been nearly 7 years and I still haven't caught up to his knowledge at the time. How do I know? Like, look at this video for the best example. I literally wanted to do the technique blindly and without preparation and I messed it up the exact same way I did back in 2017 when I tried to replicate it. Maybe it would have worked if I just paid more attention but I didn't because it's hard and complicated unlike your idea about this whole thing. It seems so easy and non-complicated on the surface but beyond that it is much harder than any other technique, at least I feel that way. And after seeing the how to paint like a grad video, I tried and I tried to replicate that for years with more or less success but it was mostly less success. And how long does it go back? Well, if you've seen my first Let's Paint video from 2021, of course you didn't, that video has like 5 views and 3 of those were me, but I was using that technique up until that point and even beyond that. I was making my own work harder for years by hopelessly trying to recreate what I saw in that one video and I was failing spectacularly. Sometime after that I started really making sketches and using layers. You know the rest, that's how I work now and uh, that's a thing that I mention in every second video and I actually decided to stop talking about this topic starting with this video. I really want to move on from it because I feel like I mention it way too many times. But my point for this one video is I just managed to remind myself how insanely I overestimated my own knowledge and how foolishly I believed I could paint like Boro in that one video. It is truly a testament to, well, it's, it's really a testament to how much I didn't improve in the time but it could be somewhat seen as something along the lines of it being a little bit like a testament to how hard it is actually to pull off. I had to admit that I messed it up but here's a really important thing. It took me years to admit that I messed it up when I was attempting to recreate the technique with such big holes in my fundamental that I wasn't able to feel to this day but then it took me about 45 minutes to admit that I messed messed up the project I was working on this time and I corrected myself this time and I started over and I finished that piece that ended up better than I expected. Then I wrote a super long and boring script talking about it. <laughs> Yay! The only last thing I wanted to say about this technique is essentially Borodante mentioned it in that video and I managed to totally ignore that piece of information. It can be used as a base and you can make a sketch on top of what you made. It doesn't have to be an end-all be-all method, but I still managed to foolishly treat it as such and it was a big mistake. Ever since I advise this to newcomers, try out many things and find what works the best for you. Don't look for the objectively best way to do things because it doesn't exist. Find your own way of doing things and the way it is the best for you and switch it up from time to time if you need to. I still change and improve the way I do things to this day and I'm confident that I will be doing it for the rest of my career as well. What is this video all about once again? Ah yes, let's talk about my unicorns now. I got a bit too much into this piece in the end but it uh, was progressing so well and I couldn't just stop. See I wasn't directly referencing a single photo from the heads, I had a whole collage of the pictures the requester sent me but I was using them as a loose guide. I really wanted to see if I can depict the heads of the horses as complex 3D objects that they are. The only real thing that I purposely changed was their eyes. Their eyes are much more human than horse and it was unintentional at first. You know it's hard to break habits uh, and if your habit is making human eyes all your creatures will have those eyes if you are not careful. I played into that and I'd say it's not the best decision however it fits the atmosphere of the piece which, which is more lighthearted than a Tim Burton production along with most of my stuff but darker than one of those 
those fantasy Barbie movies. I wasn't planning on adding more than one light at first, then I added some magic effects to the horn of the left head that illuminates a big portion of the scene which is mostly blues and greens and then you add the purple light to complement them and in that initial phase I was trying to add some purpose to the shadow and I kept failing in making that transition properly so they ended up entirely blue with some purple light that I added later. At one point I was struggling to make the body of the horses more interesting so I did what I do all the time, I turned them into a Frankensteinian monster. <laughs> one must imagine the Franken unicorn happy. My method was really cutting away some of the fur which almost left a white line across the body and I added a dark red core to it. I was trying to make stitches for some time but they didn't really fit. You really need to add more detail to the fur if you want to add the little stitches that have so little details or make the stitches much bigger so I went with a healing wound look. I'm still planning to make that video about the different stitches you can make. I think I, I mentioned it before. Added some filter layers to change the color of the fur which started out really different but then I went back to make them just different shades of blue. They are still reading as parts of different unicorns. Speaking of different unicorns, I included three colors, so there were three unicorns in this and someone at some point wrote to my attention that that big front part that would have belonged to a two-headed unicorn by the way it looks. Now most people would have uh, added some more stitches in order to combat that, but I thought it would be more interesting to actually leave it like that, as if um, the base was already a two-headed unicorn. Now it uh, looks like a mistake and sounds like an excuse and smells like fraud, doesn't it? But uh, <laughs> how does it feel? That's the real question here. Do you see a hopeful and beautiful creature or one that is in pain? Maybe the two combined finding the happiness in the state of this unlikely unity, I will let you decide. The only thing left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day, create something, even if it's a collection of unintentional pieces of beauty made with a deeply flawed technique by someone who may or may not be able to convey the message it has, if it has any at all, but most importantly, have fun while doing that. Farewell.